Yarve Shalmye Suzuku Turiana. Yarve, God and Creator, we stand in awe, thanksgiving, praise, and worship. Yeshua, we thank you for your holy and divine protection. This time, as we surrender ourselves unto you and submit ourselves unto your holy authority, we breathe as one within your spirit. Breathing deep, we draw the Amun, the life giving breath that is your spirit within us. Halanatma Afriya Tundre Khamun Lobo Shuyerya Ura Muntro Koye Wanyra Kumye Freebres Mesibian Rakhamun Ruru Kuyu Rakunture Kai Minekaibres Mikiandru Kumriotor Koyena Na. No, thank you. Thank you, each and every one of you all who are present and all who listen to the recordings. Once again, I wish to thank you all for the loving, supportive feedback. It has been much needed over these past few weeks. And I am grateful for so many people that are being blessed in this process, deepened in God's love, and expanded in understandings, and, and quite frankly, freed from shackles that the knowledge of man has put upon so much understanding surrounding God's perfect love, God's gift of life, and his holy presence. And for those that you have, who have experienced the covenant and love, I, for some reason I'm just drawn back to the ten great words tonight. And as you know, that chapter one was named, On My Path You Will Reflect These Attributes. And one of the ones that keeps coming to heart, because I've seen so much referencing to this point lately, this, this recognition that people are so attached to certain parts of this planet or certain parts of their past or tied to a specific location where they must be in order to touch the presence of God. And for those that do know, I, I was led to extend the words within the ten great words that say, you will know that you have returned into my truth as the following emerges from your being. And one of them was number four. And then if you know yourself as one with my being, you will remember that each day is a holy day and keep it holy. And there are many attacks that grace healing faces on an, on an honestly, quite frankly, a daily basis from people that try to tear me down or tear down grace healing. And one of the things they cannot conceive is the process that there is a broader message than the one they personally hold. And like this past two and a half weeks now, I've been undergoing some pretty heavy attacks from individuals. And I just, I extend love to them and I, I hope the best for them in their path. But it's, it's fascinating to watch that they must fight to retain so deeply what they think they believe as absolute truth. So much so that they can't even allow themselves to see the word love as it is spat back at me like a swear when they say that you teach them that lo God loves stuff. And I just, it's amazing to me that they, they cannot even see the fact that they have strayed from the path of knowing themselves in the being of God's presence, to, to recognize themselves as one with God's presence, to remember that as they find themselves upon the path of God's presence, that they will find and discover that each day is a holy day, and they will keep it holy. Yet they attack me about the fact that I haven't spoken to the nature of the Sabbath day, when in my heart, the holy day is every day. And I raise up reference to God in each and every breath that I have, every situation I encounter, situations that I look into, even the art of giving. I measure what God wants to give, not what Larry might do through the spirit of sympathy or concern for another, I, and, or maybe even possibly enabling another in a situation. I would rather seek God to know the measure of what God designs and desires of me. And as number four goes further, it says, in your awareness of my presence, you will find that each day is a holy day and that you will honor the image I hold for creation in your thoughts, words, and actions. In this, you will hold each day as the Sabbath day, the holy day. 
all days you be measured in the fullness of my glory, as you will be the beacon of life offered to all things as you encounter them. In this you will know you have found yourself in the fullness of my presence. You will remember that I have formed you as a holy temple, and in you is this the Holy Land. This is the Holy Land. Let me restate that. You will remember that I have formed you as a holy temple, and in you is the Holy Land. So recently I saw this beautiful show describing the different places throughout the planet, how religions have identified certain places as the one and only holy space, the most holy river of the world, the most holy mount of the world, the most holy desert of the world, and all these places. And it, it, it fascinates me that people have lost sight of the fact that the very nature of God's presence resides within them. And if they remember and know this within them, they will honor God by walking as God's holy temple. They will not be bound to a certain piece of land in such a way that it becomes war to fight, to claim, and hold, and possess, or name it as their own. They will find that they will not be governed by land, borders, or, or whatever people have to establish to set up, set, set up some concept of divide. Now, I do understand for the sake of protection of the innocents that there does need to be a certain level of man's laws and protection set in place in order to protect the innocents. But when you start utilizing the definitions of a piece of property in such a way that it becomes justified to try to steal it from another or to kill in order to keep it, that's where I say it kind of deviates away from the understanding. And we've now become so possessed by history and what we think we hold as a possession over some place, and we supplant God with this. We move away from the recognition that the very nature of God's presence resides within us. Not in some mount, not in some certain basilica, or temple, or mosque, or river for that matter. It is God within us. And if we are grateful and thankful that God has blessed us with a river that we can draw forth life, sustenance, and support from, it still comes from God. All manner of blessings, sources, rises from and emerges from the very nature of our God and Creator. If we can let go of these things that we try to possess or name as our own, even as we witness people that try to possess one another, control one another, dictate the nature of how one might live to another. In this very fact, we diminish the nature of God's presence within us by squandering and diminishing the nature of God's presence within others. So as we breathe now, Remember and know that the very breath that is in you is not just your own breath. The very breath within you is the life presence of God that stirs life within you. Then your body responds by breathing the physical air of the earth. It is life that precedes your desire to breathe. It is the very presence of God that governs each and every breath within your body to emerge and reveal life within you. So please, be freed from the limitations that religiosity has established on people. Be freed from the ties to tradition and past as if they govern you. Be blessed in celebrating them, but don't let them own you. The simple adage of all things in moderation to be thankful, blessed, and know a history through tradition is totally different than being possessed by it and feel it must be done before the recognition of God. Or in such a way that traditions become the way to separate or divide us from those other people that don't pr practice the same forms of tradition, whether it's religious or worldly. If we continue to embrace these things, 
that manifest of divide, we will continue to evidence ourselves as divided from God. And then we will not be able to touch the realization as Yahweh speaks, on my path you will reflect these attributes. Because if we are about divide, possession, holding, claiming, we will never be able to do things that are compassionate, giving, supportive, and welcoming to others. So as we see the different holy places on the grounds of this earth, we are for thanksgiving that people of a spiritual mind we're blessed to serve in these spaces. But let us not be trapped in that space. Let us be moved to move throughout the earth to transfer the beginnings of these places. Like when Yeshua was crucified. Do we revere the ground that he was crucified or do we bring his love to all people? And I know that that right there cuts right across certain people. But I have to speak that the reality is we are here to magnify the presence of God and the love that he extends through Yeshua, not just revere the bones of a saint, the relics of a certain religious order. We are not supposed to revere these things. We are to revere the nature of God's presence. Do we place the measure of our prayerful worship as an instrument of divide, or do we use it as a way that we move and recognize that our very worship can be us as the holy temple walking about this earth? As I shared a few weeks back, the time when James and I went down to Boston, and we see this beautiful young woman that was homeless for quite some time. You know, others might not have seen her as beautiful, but it was God's daughter. And she was lost. And to be able to reach down, take this woman into our arms, both my son and I, and embrace this woman and make her know that she was loved. That's what I see the Holy Temple called to do. It's not a temple that is to be bound to one specific piece of land. It is a holy temple that is to walk around and magnify the presence of God's presence for the sake of all people to know and recognize. And then we will know God's presence and glory. And as it completes within this number four, let not the possession of things or places hold you from the guidance of my truth or the reflection of my glory. So as we see the homeless, are we so fearful that we can't reach out? Check with them. Backing up for a moment, have we stopped to pray to see if we are being governed by somebody in a state of manipulation and deception or is it truly a person of genuine need? And that's what James and I did even before we approached this woman. We entered upon God's presence, stood in prayer for a moment, and both James and I were totally clear within our hearts that we were to bring the recognition of God's love to this woman. And she had been sitting there for hours on end. And she had a few mere coins in her cup because nobody would even come near her. So I'm blessed in this opportunity to bend down, embrace, draw her close and introduce her to my son James and say, this is my son James and he really wishes to give you an embrace. And he reached down and this woman just broke into absolute tears because she was not only just seen, but she was identified and introduced to another, once we get her name. And she was introduced to my son and then my son embraced her, this 13-year-old boy wanting to extend love to this woman. And James took the money we had for her, placed it in her hand, and out of nowhere... People were coming down off the steps, out of the store doors, out of the storefronts. They were all standing around. All of a sudden, everybody had to come give money. Because we weren't bound to a certain piece of land that was centralized in the state of Maine. We were living in Boston as God's presence. This is what the freedom of knowing yourself upon the path of God's presence can bring to you. It's the full recognition that you will find no thing of creation placed above God. You will find that you will know the very breath of God's presence to be your beginning, the very beginning and sustaining of your existence. And then you will honor God's desire in every situation. 
And yes, I've walked by other homeless that in my spirit I knew that this person was not homeless. And if you sat and watched for a long time, you'd find them just move on and they'd hop in their car and leave because they were not being genuine in the nature of the needs. But if you're prayerful in the discerning and the seeking of God's presence, you will know that each day is a holy day. And as you keep it holy by centering upon God's presence first, you will know the measure of your walk before God. You will be moved in such a way that you will become the instrument that magnifies God's glory to be seen for all, not just bound and locked into the borders of a certain country or state, not to be bound or locked within a certain basilica or church or worship space, not to feel like you must go to church on Sunday when God is calling you, that you must go to the street and serve those who can't. It's about expanding, opening, recognizing. The very nature of worship can be holding God in reverence above every thought, word, and action and allowing for God to move you in such a way that reveals his love, compassion, support, and his holy will through divine wisdom and grace. And as we breathe, remember that this breath that resides within you is birthed, extended, and sustained by God's presence within you. And we breathe as one Yarya nyare kungoria smahalum, Yeshua yenero makundro pot yuro, Abun solondro kun yeva un yuro kun yu, Abun. Yeshua sandale kundre vis misirietera, undre kolir manavias misitiation kutoro kombio. As you know, within grace healing, we are called to measure all things first before God's presence. Everything. Heiner and I offer thanksgiving for each and every one of you that come. We continue to extend in prayer each and every day for all of you and for all humanity, both those who have been present upon this planet and those who are yet to come. We offer thanksgiving to know that God's glory is present to be recognized within each and every temple that was hand-formed and designed by our loving God. I pray blessing upon each and every one of you that you would find a deep and holy rest within God's loving embrace and know that you are loved. May you touch upon God's breath throughout this whole week in every situation you face. Be blessed and have a sevenfold sleep within God's loving arms and awake tomorrow refreshed and renewed for all that you encounter. We love you dearly. Take care and be blessed. <laughs>